In this video, we're going to discuss the free electron model. Now, the free electron model is a interesting, direct application of the one dimensional particle in the box that we've introduced so far. Essentially, what we're going to do is use our one dimensional particle in the box energies in order to calculate the excited states in, in a linear organic molecule. So let's take an example and show how this works. So I'm going to use the example of 1,3-butadiene. You know from your studies of organic chemistry that 1,3-butadiene uh, has resonance, right? These double bonds can travel, so to speak, if we're thinking about resonance structures throughout these different Lewis structures, right? The pi electrons are going to be delocalized throughout the entire structure, right? Which means these pi electrons can technically move anywhere along this structure of the alkene. Now, since it's a linear alkene, we can actually make the assumption here that this would be similar to a particle in a confined box, right? So we're going to use the particle in the box model to get the excited state of a linear alkene where we know the pi electrons can travel uh, anywhere throughout the molecular framework. Now, if you're really adept at uh, organic chemistry, then you know that this um, this resonance structure forms a carbon ion, which is super unstable. So this is actually a very minor structure. And of course, this is the major structure of butadiene, but it still has resonance, right? So these pi electrons are completely delocalized. So we can use this as a model of, the, of uh, a one dimensional particle in a box that's confined to this carbon network, right? Now there's two assumptions that we're making that I wanna make sure are explicit here. So there's two assumptions that we're making that I think need to be uh, explicated, but knowing that we're making these assumptions, we'll see how good the result is, right? So the first assumption that we're making is that we're overlooking that there will be nodes in the molecular plane. We're going to assume that the particle can travel anywhere within this carbon framework. But we know that that's not necessarily true, right? We know that there are nodes where there will be regions of zero electron density, right? If you even just think about the shape of a P orbital, there's a node in the middle, right? There's a, a radial node. So, um, so you, we're going to ignore any nodes. So we're just going to ignore the existence of nodes to apply this model, right? So we know that we're just going to assume that the particle, just like in a particle, particle in a box, particle can just travel anywhere within the box, right? Um, and the other thing that we're going to overlook or the assumption that we're going to make, um, is that, uh, the box, the, the wave function can actually, uh, extend past this carbon network, right? So it's not necessarily just applied to, it doesn't just stop at this carbon, right? So in order to, um, in order to, you know, account for that, we're going to add another half bond length to the end of our box here. So just think about a one half bond length added there and a one half bond length added here, right? Because the wave function isn't going to just abruptly stop because there's a carbon atom there, right? Um, these orbitals can extend well past the actual carbon atom. So in order to accommodate for that, we'll add a one half bond length to accommodate for that. So uh, we know that the wave function extends past the carbons. So we'll add one half a bond length to each side to account. Right, so in that way we account for a little bit of the spillage of the wave function over that carbon atom, right? Okay, so using these two assumptions, we can start to uh, to actually quantify, calculate this excited state using the one dimensional particle in the box model. So just a little bit of a primer on excited states, especially in this model. We know that we have um, two uh, double bonds here, right? So that means we're going to have two, uh, four pi electrons, right? Two uh, pi bonds will equivalent uh, will be equivalent to four pi electrons. So I'm going to draw um, three orbitals for these electrons to go in. Right, so we'll have a doubly occupied orbital here, doubly occupied here, and then I'll leave this one empty, right? These are our four electrons. This will be the ground state. Right, so our ground state would have all four electrons doubly occupied in the lowest two orbitals. And for this case, I'll call these orbitals, these are just going to be our free electron model 
uh, molecular orbitals. Right, so we'll have um, we'll have two in the in in psi one, uh, two electrons paired in psi two, and in an empty orbital psi three. Right, so now uh, psi two is going to be our highest occupied molecular orbital. Right, the homo, our highest occupied molecular orbital, and psi three would be our lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. Right, this is our ground state. So in order to excite an electron from the low from the highest occupied molecular orbital to the lowest unoccupied orbital. You're going to come in with some sort of UV radiation, so we'll have some sort of light that'll shine on your molecule in order to, uh, to get the electron into an excited state, right? So basically what's going to happen here is that we're going to still have these same three orbitals, so I'll draw these again. Right, so we got these same three orbitals, right? We'll have this one as doubly occupied, but now this electron is going to be in the LUMO now, right? So it's going to be excited to psi three, right? So basically all that happened here is that you excited this electron up to the next level once you shone, uh, shined light on it, right? So this will be known as the first excited state. Right, so now how can we use the uh, one-dimensional particle in the box model? Well, what we can do is just calculate the exc excitation energy as the difference between the energy of the electron in psi 3 and the energy of the electron in psi 2. Right, so basically we're going to say this, this um, electron is excited from level 2 to level 3 calculate that energy difference and that energy difference is going to give us the excitation energy right so um, let's do that let's do that calculation so we're going to calculate an energy difference between the energy of the electron in state three minus the energy of the electron in state two right here just doing a general difference final minus initial right and for these energies we're going to use the one dimensional particle in the box model Right, so basically all I have to do is just do three squared minus two squared times h squared, eight ml squared, right? This is our particle in the box model, right? This is our particle in the box energy, right? So now the only thing that we have to figure out, right? We know that m is gonna be the mass of an electron. We got that. H is Planck's constant, got that. Everything else is numbers. The only thing we need here is L, right? So uh, for the length of the box, an average carbon-carbon bond here in butadiene is going to be uh, 1.4 angstroms, right? So we're going to have 1.40 angstroms as the average carbon-carbon uh, bond length in butadiene. So what I'm going to do to get the length of the box is I'm going to multiply that by 4, right? The reason I'm multiplying by 4, right, because we got three bonds, but we're also adding this half bond length distance. So half plus a half is basically a whole, uh, one whole extra bond. So I'll multiply by four in order to get the full length of the box that I need here, right? So if I do that, uh, so that would actually be the length of my box, right? So L would be equal to 1.40 angstroms times four. So we can plug that in here in order to get the, uh, the, ex the excitation energy, right? Um, well, first thing, I do want to convert this to SI units first. So that's going to be four times 1.40 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, right? Go ahead and convert that to meters in anticipation of plugging this in uh, with other things in SI units. Okay, so now that we have that, we can plug everything in and solve, right? So uh, three squares, nine, uh, two squares, four. So there's gonna be five on the outside times Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds that's going to be squared over eight times the mass of an electron 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms and the length of our box four times 1.4 zero times 10 to the negative 10 meters right and of course this guy is squared as well okay so you do that you get an excitation energy of 9.615 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. 
right? So this would be the energy um, that would be required to excite the electron from the second level to the third level, right? Now, the next question that I want to ask here is what radiation would you have to use to excite this electron from level two to level three, right? What, what radiation do I need to use? What frequency do I need to tune my light to in order to cause this excitation to happen? So we can actually calculate this, right? So let me actually do this on another slide. Right, so what we can use is the following equation, right? We can use our good old delta E is equal to H nu, right? Planck's law, right? So we can use Planck's law here in order to calculate the uh, frequency that our radiation will have to be at, right? So I actually wanna calculate the wavelength here so I can rewrite this as HC over lambda and then solve for lambda, lambda HC over delta E. And then so from there, I can plug in, right? So our delta E, again, that we got here, 9.615 times 10 to the negative 19. We can plug that in. We have the speed of light. We have Planck's constant. When you plug all that in, you get 207 nanometers as your answer. You plug all that stuff in, you convert to nanometers, you get 207 nanometers. Now, how good is this compared to experimental value, right? Because we can always calculate something using an equation. Doesn't mean that it's any good, right? This uh, particle in the box model predicts that if you uh, shine 207 nanometer light on butadiene, you will cause an excitation. Um, in reality, that wavelength from experiment is 210 nanometers, right? So think about this right what we've done is use a really simple model that actually includes very little chemistry nothing about bonding nothing about atoms it's just a particle in a one-dimensional box we make a few assumptions and we actually get pretty close to the experimental value of the first excitation of butadiene just from using a one-dimensional particle in the box model now this model is actually a perfect, this molecule is a perfect testing ground because, you know, it's a rather short molecule and it's a, and it's a linear molecule, right? Uh, this model starts to break down as you get to nonlinear molecules like rings and, and cycles. It also breaks down as the, the box gets longer, right? But it's very interesting to note that with a very simple quantum model and a few assumptions, you can actually get pretty darn close to experiment. Um, just by using this really simple model. Okay, so that's the free electron model. In the next video, we're going to go through um, what happens when we look at a two-dimensional box, right? Adding a second dimension here. Um, what does its wave function, energy levels, and all of that stuff look like when we move into two dimensions?